There's a lot of things you can do wrong with your EV battery. Today, Rev is going to tell you exactly how to keep your EV battery in best health. It's very important to know what kind of battery is built in your EV, because different batteries have different chemistries. The way you treat them makes a difference. Teslas have mainly two types of lithium-ion batteries. One is a lithium-iron phosphate battery, usually found on all single-motor models. And then there is a nickel-cobalt-aluminium battery, usually found on dual-motor models. And how you treat these two batteries is different. Because my car has an NCA battery, I need to follow the guidelines for this particular battery type, which includes avoiding charging it to 100% all the time. But this isn't the guideline for every single battery out there. And it's not necessarily what applies to the LFP battery. And might not apply to Tesla's newer 4680 tabless battery either. So you really need to find out what your EV's battery chemistry is. In an ideal world, each manufacturer tells you how to treat your battery right. If you haven't figured it out yet, follow a very simple 10 to 80% charging rule. That will definitely keep your battery in best health. In the case of my car, which has an NCA battery, charging it to 100% regularly reduces the battery's life cycle. This is because when the battery is fully charged, the battery's voltage is higher. And at higher voltages, the electrolyte begins to corrode the electrodes. In the same way, letting the battery drain all the way to zero also damages it and reduces its life cycle. Manufacturers do have a safety margin built into the battery because the usable capacity is less than the gross capacity. But if your battery remains between 10 to 80% charged, it should remain in good health. Of course, like with everything, there are exceptions to this rule. So now you are wondering when it is allowed to charge your battery to 100%. I only do it when I drive off immediately. So a fully charged battery meeting your departure time is the right way to do it. Like I already explained, it's not good to keep charging your EV battery to 100%. But it's even worse to have a fully charged EV sitting around without moving it for ages. Because then you're just increasing the chances of battery damage. In my experience, charging all the way to 100% only makes sense at the start of a long road trip. As stated earlier, batteries are made of chemical compounds and chemical compounds react to temperature. Which means if you live near the polar circle or if you live in the middle of the desert, your battery might need some extra attention. So you should also know about your battery temperature limits. In my Tesla Model 3 Performance, for example, plus 60 degrees and minus 30 degrees are the limits. So leaving your car in extreme heat or extreme cold will definitely damage the battery. Of course, most EVs do have some sort of battery management system to protect the battery from extreme temperatures. But you can also do your bit to help the battery. Some manufacturers recommend plugging the EV into a charger to ensure the battery management system is drawing power from the outlet instead of from the battery itself. And if your car has been standing out in the sun for a long time, moving it into the shade and allowing it to cool down before charging it will help preserve the battery. If your car has been in the freezing cold, drive it around for a bit to warm up the battery and then charge it to make sure the battery is in good health. Otherwise, your battery is in danger of something called lithium plating, which reduces its life cycle. The Tesla's battery management system kicks in even when the car isn't on or plugged into a charger. And there's a cabin overheat protection which switches on above certain temperatures to help preserve the car's electronics and also has a passive influence on battery temperature. Like a lot of things in life, EV charging is all about balance. My advice is charge as slow as possible and just as fast as necessary. Of course, on long trips you can use a fast charger, but in your commute, in your daily situation, use 11 kilowatts and you will be happy. Of course, modern EVs do precondition the battery to make sure that it's ready to accept energy at an accelerated rate. So this is what I have learned about how to treat my EV's battery right. What I can recommend is don't be lazy, read the user's manual 
and find out what's best for your very own EV battery. And watch out for the next episode where I will tell you how to drive energy efficiently in your EV. If you have any tips how to keep your battery in best health, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, subscribe to DWRF.